All right, folks, it's still February 10th, which is a Wednesday. It's gotten up to 15 degrees Fahrenheit. What I'm gonna do now is talk about a mini split. Obviously I have a Mitsubishi unit. And yes, I would say this thing is huge. It's so big and so heavy, you can't mount it on the building. So it has its own stand. Now, like all devices like this, it has to be level. The company did, did, did the install, said, hey, listen, if it gets off kilter at all, just a little bit, give us a call. We'll re um, put some more gravel in, et cetera, and re-level it. They're very generous about that, which makes sense. And there's always a possibility it's going to shift because obviously this is new soil. It's new construction. But you notice what it is is a heat pump. These fans turn. And hopefully in the future I'll have some videos showing how slow these fans are. They literally are just turning at a very slow rate when there isn't much demand. Now this mini split powers the heads in the house. And there are, oh God, what's it, eight heads? I've forgotten. But there's one in each bedroom. There's two in the living room. There's one in the mudroom and there's two in the garage. I think that's eight. Somebody count it for me. The nice thing about this is incredibly efficient. It both heats and cools. It either is heating or cooling. It can't do both simultaneously. But the beauty of it is it allows the individual with the head in their room or space to, if they're cooling, let's say it's the summer, to have it cooler than the other rest of the house. So unlike a forced air system, which is when you set the thermostat, all the rooms are the same coolness, whether they need it or not, or when it's in the heating mode, all the rooms are the same heat. This mini split heat pump device allows you to tune your space to your needs. It's pretty cool or pretty hot depending on how you look at it. So I'm gonna walk inside. I'm gonna disconnect her right now and I'll be right back. Bye. So now we're in the house. And we're looking at the mini split head, which is what this is. And basically, uh, the Freon or the R34A runs in pipes up to this. And it can either carry heat or air conditioning, but you can't do both at the same time, which sort of makes sense. And the idea is that let's say you're in here and you just want cooling in the living room or dining room but you don't want the rest of the house to be cooled. Well, all you're doing is cooling the living room. There's one over there, there's one over there. The advantage of that is it makes it tunable. And like I said before, if you're running standard forced air, air conditioning, we probably have all experienced this, where parts of the house can be really cold and parts of the house aren't cold enough. So you end up jacking the temp down and down to get the parts you're in to the temperature you want, but then the rest of the house gets uncomfortably cold. The beauty of these mini split heads, of which there are eight in the house, I'll walk around a little bit, is that they're tunable. Each room that has a mini split head, like here's the mudroom, there's one, and then here's the third bedroom study, and there's one. So let's say the person in this room says the house is too hot, I don't like it. They have their own control, separate from the rest of the house. And they can make this room as cold as they want. Or in the winter, if it's not warm enough for them, this can provide heat. So they can make it as warm as they want without influencing any other part of the house. Now, mini splits are expensive. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's a luxury. It costs more money than forced air, forced heat, but it's worth it. This room, this bedroom, master bedroom, has its own mini split. So if I wanna sleep really cold and the rest of the people in the house wanna sleep warm, like somebody's in the guest bedroom, number two, I can control my temperature to whatever coolness I want and it will not influence this head. They're all separate. Now I can run them all the same at the same time, but each one is an independent unit. 
So the person sleeping in this room says, hey, 68 degrees is great. I love it. And I'm in this room and I'm going, oh, 68 degrees in the summer is too warm. I want it 65. I just control my head, cool the room down to 65. I'm comfortable. The person in this room leaves theirs off or they can run it at 68 and they're comfortable. Same thing goes for living room. Let's say you've got a lot of cooking going on and it's getting hot in here. You can increase the output of these heads to deal with the extra heat in this space, which is generated by cooking without influencing anything else in the house. So hopefully I made that clear. You can run it at 65 in the kitchen. You can run it at 68 in the mudroom. You can run it at 67 in this room, all independent. They don't influence each other. And then we come to the garage. And although it's dark in here, it's getting late in the afternoon. You notice there's a mini split head there. So in the garage, I can leave these things off. Don't have to run them at all. The rest of the house can be running, cooling, but this one can be off. And the other head here can be off. And let's say I come into the garage and it's one of those hot, sweaty July days. And I would love to do something, but it's... 95 degrees outside or 100 degrees outside. It's humid, but I want to work in the garage, but it's too uncomfortable to work in the garage. I can fire up this head and the head down there, cool this space down, dehumidify it, make for a very comfortable garage experience. And I'm only in the garage for, let's say, an hour and a half, two hours. I run this for the time I'm in the garage. And then when I leave the garage, I turn them off. So I'm not heating and cooling this space continuously. I'm heating and cooling it as needed. So same thing applies to heat. The in-floor heat does the majority of the heavy lifting in the winter. It does it for the bathrooms, does it for the bedrooms. So let's say you're running the whole house at 65 degrees, but you want your sleeping space at 68. In-floor heat runs at a baseline level, very consistent. It doesn't change, go up and down quickly. You can run that in heat mode because it's a heat pump. It's a mini split. It can do heat or cold. That allows each person in each space to tune, adjust, have the temperature they want in the space they're occupying. So this head can be at 68. This head could be at 70. Now realize this is all at the same time. These heads could be off. The mudroom could be on. The third bedroom could be on or off, doesn't matter. Each head runs independent of the others. And I thought, well, that's a nice feature. That's, that's great flexibility and allows everybody to have the room at the temperature they want. And we've all been in houses where we go, oh man, this room is really hot and it's stuffy. And then we go in another room with forced air and we go, oh, this room's cold and drafty. That's not an issue with mini splits. But like I said, they are pricey. You're not going to save money in terms of install. You'll probably save money in terms of your electric bill but since I paid my first two months of electricity without these running, of course, these are not running yet, but just as the way it is, I'm spending more to be connected to the power than I'm spending on electricity. That'll change once the stove and oven are in, dishwasher, all that cool stuff. But currently, it costs more in electricity to be connected than I'm actually using. It'll be fun this summer when I have these mini splits running to see what the electric bill is. It shouldn't be bad. Heat pumps, which this is a heat pump, for every kilowatt of power you put in, you get about three kilowatts of cooling or heating out of it because it takes the air outside and takes either the heat out of the air, 
using the pump or it discharges the heat into the air. Pretty efficient, pretty amazing. And once again, tunable. These things are actually smart enough to know where you are in the room. They've got little sensors. And as you move around, they can actually be designed to say, hey, this person wants cold air blowing on them. Or you can tune it so the cold air doesn't blow on you. You just want the space cool, but you don't want the direct blowing on you. It can be done. And Mitsubishi is supposed to be a good unit. The guys that installed it have been installing these things for a decade. They do probably one a day. So they're very good at what they do. It's not something for the uninitiated. It's something to be done by somebody who does it on a regular basis. You don't want to have somebody installing a whole house mini split system. And this is their second install. That's a bad decision. So it's the end of the day. It's around 3.30 or 4. Life is good. It's a little hazy. It's going to be cold for the next week or so. Typical for February. I always forget it. And I want you all to be happy. Keep smiling. And I will have a discussion on the heat recovery ventilator at another video. And I'll have a discussion on the whole house dehumidifier, which is actually pretty cool technology and useful. And then we can talk about the in-floor heat. So I have every kind of heating and cooling and dehumidifying system, I think, available to man. I don't have a fireplace because, frankly, I don't like fireplaces. But we could always install one if we wanted to, but I'm not going to. So take care. Love you all. Keep smiling. Bye.